Hey folks, Scott Perkins here from Bearded Butchers, along with Seth Perkins. Seth's got a deer here, he's gonna show you how to cut it up. The video that kicked off the whole series of Bearded Butcher videos on YouTube was pretty much this video. However, it wasn't as clear as this one's gonna be. The audio wasn't as good. We simply did it on a cell phone. Here we are a few years later. Um, upgraded equipment and a ton of more videos and a ton more subscribers pushing towards that million mark on YouTube with subscribers. So appreciate y'all. It's been an incredible ride. Let's get down to business. We have Ohio whitetail doe shot during archery season. What I'm going to do is I'm going to go through this and I'm just going to break down into subprimals. Just going to be using uh, our favorite six inch Victorinox boning knife. You can snag one of these on the website. We even have some with our Bearded Butcher logo on them. Yeah, we're just gonna work through this deer, bust it into subprimals. I'm gonna lay everything out on a table and show you how you can um, get it to that point and then do with it what you wish from there. So let's get started. First thing we wanna do is pull this flank off. You wanna reach inside your deer and pull these inner loins out. So just follow right up along the vertebrae here. Get your fingers underneath these inner loins. Make a couple initial cuts along both sides. And then you can pretty much just pull those out of there. So that's a deer tenderloin. Parts of the country call them fish tenders. Some people call them inner loins, tenderloins. We call them delicious. Now I do have to mention this deer has been dry aged for eight days at 32 30, 32 to 34 degrees Fahrenheit, um, about 85% humidity in our cooler. So does make it a little bit more difficult to process when it's stiff like this, but you'll get the idea. So after those inner loins are out, what we'll do is we'll start right here by this H bone. And there's a ball joint right here you want to find. Just remember that you can use downward pressure through this process and gravity is your friend. So finding that ball joint, cutting through that knuckle, locating that H bone, and then just peeling this whole hind quarter out of here with the sirloin attached. Just like that. So there's your hind quarters. So far, hind quarters and inner loins have been removed. Now what we'll do, just remove a little bit of this flank meat, start a trim pile. We're going to remove the front shoulder. Get to know the anatomy of the animal. That way you can find all these muscle seams. This is where the shoulder blade is. Just simply held on by some tendons and pretty easy to take off. Once that's been completed, we're going to go ahead and take the back strap out. You can start by just making a little cut up along the ribs. Taking the tip of your knife and just slowly working down these ribs. Keep in mind this deer, like I mentioned earlier, has been aged for eight days. So it's, um, 
little bit more difficult to work on. So once you make your initial cut down along those ribs and that vertebrae, come on the top side here, make a cut. This is just along the back here, along these vertebrae. This is similar to like a gutless method, however we field dressed it. But if you're gonna do a breakdown in the field with, you know, say an elk or wild game in the field, this is a similar process. Just going all the way up into the neck. There's one back strap. Now what we'll do is remove a little bit of this rib meat. So what I'm showing you here is just an initial breakdown. This is something that just about anybody can do, you know, in their shop. You can, some, some people get away with doing it in their kitchens, however you want to do it. But this is going to be your initial breakdown to get this busted down into these subprimals so that you can further process it from there. So with the neck, you can just take some of this meat, just trim it off there. That'll go into our grinds. You can cut that off whole if you want, leave the bone in it, make a bone in neck roast if you'd like. Pull the flank off this side, spin it around. Now we're going to start up here and do the same thing, making a cut down along these ribs, starting up here at the top side. following with your blade all the way down along those vertebrae. Once you follow those rib bones down, get your knife, start right along the vertebrae. Slowly working that back strap out. You can take the shoulder off before or after, whichever is convenient for you. Some of that rib meat off there. So there you have it with all the uh, subprimals. The deer carcass is pretty much stripped of all of those. We are going to spend a little bit more time on this. We're going to go down through each rib. We're going to get this meat off here. We certainly don't want anything to go to waste. So we've got our, our trimmings pile started. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to move these subprimals over to our other table. Just go through a little bit of a breakdown on those and some different things you can do with them. But um, for the time being, for the sake of the, the length of the video, this one's going to get aside. We'll go through it. We'll get it cleaned up a little bit more. Bearded Butcher Blend Black, described as deep and dark. It's got a nice richness with the addition of the instant coffee and the molasses powder that we put in there. Makes a really nice bark. The spice will actually turn dark on the outside of meats. One of my favorites, I simply cannot eat a ribeye steak without it. Try it on brisket, it's phenomenal. Bearded Butcher Blend Black when you want that deep, dark flavor. So we're just gonna start grabbing some of these subprimals and moving them over here to this table. And I'll just go through and do a breakdown for you. Moving, removing the uh, shank. You can make also buco, you can trim it out into grindings, whatever you'd like. I'm gonna follow this femur bone in between that top round and that round tip. I'm just going to break this down into the different muscles and show you which, where they're located and which ones they are. So after we get that out, I'm going to pull the sirloin off of here. We can strip that round tip out of there. One of my favorite roasts on a deer right here, this round tip, also known as a sirloin tip. It's an incredible tasting roast. 
slow cook that, make some, mix some veggies with it, make some barbecued venison. Incredible. Now located right here in this hind between the top, bottom, and eye is that gland everybody asks about. So right here in the hind quarter is this gland and located inside this little piece of fat. So we always make sure that we get that gland out of there. Breaking this down into three pieces. Remembering what I said about finding the anatomy of the, or knowing the anatomy of the animal, following these muscle seams, top round, eye of round, and now the bottom round. If you get real creative, you can even save the uh, tri-tip off of your deer. On to the second hind quarter. I'm gonna break this one down just like the initial, like the front or the first one into the different muscle structures like you see here. And then we'll move on to another primal. Front shoulders, a few different things you can do here. You can do bone-in roasts, you can pull flat irons, you can make it boneless into grinds, um, pretty much whatever you want. There is another gland right here in these front shoulders to keep in mind. You might wanna remove that out of there. So right there in that chunk of fat you can see is that gland. So just pull that out, discard it. So your shoulder blades right here, you can see that shoulder blade bone going down through. Right here is a ball joint. So what we'll do is we'll just separate this right at that ball joint. And then you can decide with a piece like this, makes an excellent roast. You could make it bone in, you could make it boneless, really whatever, whatever you want. A lot of times, and I'll just demo making one boneless for you real quick. A lot of times what we do is we trim these out into, you know, grinds, things like that, maybe save the flat iron, but <clears throat> Get that meat started on that blade bone. Once you get that started, you can find the top of that bone using the tip of your knife. Once you get this flat iron sort of started, you can just pull it out of there like that. So that is the top blade stake otherwise known as a flat iron. And then you can just trim that up for grinds. This is that arm portion of that shoulder. Find that knuckle, take that front shank off of there, add it to your asabuco pile. So with this makes an excellent bone in roast. You can trim it out for grinds, sort of whatever you want with that. So the first shoulder we made boneless, except for that arm portion. This one, we're just gonna find that ball joint. Pop it off there. Make a nice bone-in style blade roast. A couple, two to three pounder. This deer being dry aged this long definitely makes it more difficult fabricating all these pieces off of it because it is, it's, it's dry. But the end result of dry aged venison can't be beat, so that's why we do it. So we saved the best two things for last, those back straps and those inner loins. So with these, the way we peel them apart is just get them started with a knife. Just a, they just need help in a couple spots. But then you can pretty much just use your fingers to pull the rest of it out of there. Once you get that fat off the back, you can then just start cleaning it up. We like to remove all the silver skin off the back of these because it just makes for a better eating experience. And the way I do that, 
So you can see that silver skin right here on the back. You can pretty much fillet it off there just like a fish. So without losing too much of that loin meat, let's get your knife started in between the back strap and the silver skin and just fillet it like that, like you would a fish. If there's a little bit excess left on there, you can just use the tip of your knife and just take a little bit more of it off. So there you have a beautiful back strap ready to be cut into chops or made into a roast or however you want to do it. Keeping a sharp knife is definitely key. So one way we do that is we have a video on YouTube on how to keep your knife sharp, but we also have the steel on the website. Occasionally, just tuning your knife on your steel will position that edge back into place and just keep a nice razor sharp knife. Same thing, just get that started against that silver skin. Just removing it like that. Not putting a bunch of hack marks in it, gouges, just nice, smooth, slow as smooth, smooth as fast type action. So there you have a couple back straps. Inner loins. So with these, you just want to take this fat, this kidney fat off of here. And there again, you can just use your fingers to pull that off. You wind up with a beautiful deer tenderloin. Not a ton of meat there, but what's there is incredible. So we've done the more in-depth videos on deer processing. Um, this is kind of the one, like we said earlier, that kicked us off on YouTube with our deer, with our deer processing and butchering in general um, with the videos. But we, what we wanted to do is sort of just a quick, rough breakdown um, with, with processing a deer. That way, when you go to do it, things make more sense to you. You can certainly get way more technical. You can use saws, you can, you know, just there's, a, there's many different ways you can do it, but we want to just do initial breakdown of a whole deer using just a knife and then explain all the different primals. I'm just going to go down through here and um, zip these into chops real quick. They're so enjoyable to eat, obviously fun to cut. So we're just going to, what you want to do is you want to take your fingers and hold them like this to keep that cut nice and stable. And then I always take my forefinger and position it over top of the blade because it just keeps everything nice and stable. So just a nice inch and a quarter cut moving down through this loin. And there you have some beautiful backstrap chops. Now that we have the deer broken down into these pieces, I want to go through and explain just a few things about them and things that you can do with them. So let's start down here at the center of the, of, of the pile. We have those hind shanks, those front shanks, asabuco, etc. You can certainly trim those out into for your grindings, that sort of thing. A couple of our most favorite roasts on a deer, elk, bison, you name it, those round tip roasts, otherwise known as a sirloin tip. Absolutely incredible. Those top round roasts, many different things you can do with those. You can cut stew, stir fry, you can cut those into steaks. You can make like a chicken fried steak with them. You can do cube steak, Swiss steak, uh, jerky. I mean, you name it. There's tons of different things you can do with a venison top round. So there again, phenomenal cuts. Eye of round, typically what we do with those, we cut them into stew meat. You can make them into a roast, jerky, that sort of thing. Same goes for the bottom round. So there you have your three muscles, actually four muscles in the round, three being the main top, eye, bottom, and then you have that round tip, that sirloin tip on there. Moving down into that back strap, we cut those boneless, those gorgeous boneless chops. You can see here, you can do those like I did them about an inch to an inch and a quarter thick. You can make them butterflied. You can do French chops, you can do bone in, tons of different things you can do with the back strap. Today we just did the boneless version. 
Couple boneless sirloins, cook those up whole, delicious. Those inner loins, incredible. They're small, but they're tender and they're amazing. Couple of the arm portions of those shoulders, we left these bone in, make a nice bone in roast. You can trim those out for grindings. We did a bone in blade roast and we also did the boneless version. Um, you can pull the flat iron out here if, if you wish. So there's all your cuts. Now this is the average size Ohio whitetail doe. This one weighed 92 pounds hanging on our rail. It did dry age for eight days, so it's gonna shrink some. We're gonna use a little, you know, lose some yield percentage there um, in, the, in the drying process. But overall, you can see how much of the cuts we got. We have a pile of trimmings here that we're gonna further process down into grindings. We're not gonna get into that today. We have other videos on our channel specifically for grindings, but you can see the pile here. Most likely we're gonna end up with somewhere, I'm thinking in that 60 pound range of finished product, 55, 60 pounds, give or take. Um, we're, we're gonna get all the fat out of these trimmings and then we're gonna you know, add most likely 10% pork to it. Um, we're gonna make a bunch of different things. We're gonna do summer sausage, smokies, grindings, just to, into hamburger. Um, there again, all these videos are on our channel. So if there's anything like that that you wanna see, um, certainly circle back to something we've already done. But we wanna just give you a quick breakdown. I know it's deer season here in Ohio. It's a good time for a refresher course on a video. We thought it'd be a perfect time to throw it on YouTube. This, like, like I mentioned, this is just a rough breakdown. Get your knife out, get that deer. You can either do it hanging or you can do it on your table. Break it down into primals. It's much easier to work with at this point. You could even take these, you can freeze them as, you know, as a whole piece, get them back out of the freezer later in the year, cut them into jerky, make smoked meats and things like that. So, like I said, we want to get this out. We want to get it broke down so you can see um, moving into the season how easy this can be at home. You can accomplish this yourself, I guarantee it. Don't be intimidated by it. And by the way, don't forget to pick up some Bearded Butcher Blend seasonings while you're at it. Fantastic on wild game. We've added some new flavors. There's black in here, there's butter blend. Um, and this is a six pack that's completely customizable to your liking on our website, www.beardedbutchers.com. So go grab some spices, head into the woods, Faith family food is what we like to say because this is something we enjoy. We enjoy it with our families. We love the process of hunting in the outdoors and obviously the reward sitting down together and eating it at the end of the day. Can't be beat. So there you have it. Deer Breakdown here on YouTube. Don't forget, subscribe, and there's a bunch more to come. See you next time.